heart is filled with joy. Every time I open my mouth to praise, my heart is filled with joy. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Manasseh again. Every time I open my mouth to praise, my heart is filled with joy. The Bible says, if you hear the word of God, if you hear the word of God today, harden not your heart. Praise the Lord. A broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Lord will not reject. Hallelujah. I want to speak to young people today. And I want us to read from Luke chapter <clears throat> Luke chapter 7, and we'll be reading from verse 11. I'll read really quick. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. Much people accompanied the woman whose son passed. Okay, take note of that. And 13, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said, unto her, weep not. And he came and touched the bier or the coffin, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise, hallelujah. I came to speak to young people. A lot of young people are dying unexpectedly. A, young of, a lot of young people's destinies have been interrupted by the enemy. A, a, a lot of young people are taken on a way. Life just gets abrupt. This is not how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to enjoy long life serving the Lord. But what happens? Young people are going every day. Now, this widow, the Bible tells me that first, the problem she had was that she had lost her husband. That's why the Bible calls her a widow. Now, the only thing that gave her, which was the last source of joy, was her son. And her son passed. The Bible says that they carried the dead man. Actually, four people carried the dead man. And they were going out of the city. Now, then came Jesus with his disciples. And much people accompanied him. So, we now have two crowds. It was the crowd that accompanied Jesus, life giver. Jesus is the life. Jesus is life. He is truth. He is the way. Now, there was this crowd that accompanied Jesus. And they were going into the city. Now, there was another crowd that accompanied the dead man. But this time, they were going out of the city. In life, there are always two crowds. There is the crowd that comes in. There is the crowd that goes out. Every now and then people die and they go. People die every day all over the world. Number of them, they are going out. And every day people are birthed into this world. So as much crowd goes out, much crowd comes in. Now what is important here is which crowd you hang out with. Because it's very important. A, long, a, a lot of young people today hang out with the wrong crowd. And because they hang out with wrong crowd, their life is with a question mark. Their life can just be taken in a second, in a second. But I believe that if you have God, if you have Jesus, you will enjoy long life. You will enjoy, you, you will enjoy life everlasting as well, eternity, in heaven, not in hell. Now, now as a young man, there are a lot of distraction, not just young men, young women as well. There are a lot of distraction, going to nightclub, chasing women, blah, 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 you know, all these things. There are a lot of things that take our attention. But the Bible tells me in Joy chapter 2, verse 28, I love that verse. It said, in the last days will I pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh. Then it goes by saying that, and your young men and your young daughters shall prophesy what kind of prophecy the bible tells me in revelation that the testimony of jesus 
is the spirit of prophecy. Somebody say hallelujah. So, what prophecy? Young men and women will be equipped with the spirit of prophecy so they can go prophesy about Jesus, to testify about Jesus to, for the end time harvest. I mean, in these last days, we know that God is equipping young people more than ever because he wants them to help in the end time gathering. He wants them to participate fully in the kingdom business. Praise the Lord. So, now, I looked at the verse carefully. There's one word that drew my attention, and it is compassion. And when I check some meaning, okay, I, I wrote down some things concerning compassion. First, compassion is gotten from a Latin word. It's rooted from Latin, and it means co-suffering, co-suffering. Now, Jesus saw this desperate woman who had lost her husband, and this time had lost her son. And they were taking the boy out of the city. That was already a proof that the boy was a dead person because according to the custom of the city of Nain, where this boy came from, that a dead man, first of all, will be wrapped in a grave, uh, in a grave cloth and his face will also be wrapped with a, with a shawl. And then they carried the dead man out of the city. So the fact they were carrying the boy out of the city, that was already a proof that his destiny was closed. A, young, a lot of young people their destiny just closed like that. So they were carrying him out. There was much people that accompanied the coffin, that accompanied the boy, the dead boy. But there was this other crowd that accompanied Jesus into the city. And then at the gate, at the gate of the city of Nain, that is where life met with death. And Jesus turned around the destiny of the dead boy. Jesus looking at the woman, he had compassion. What is compassion? It means co-suffering. It gives rise to an active desire to alleviate another suffering. Wow. It gives, I'll take that again. It gives rise to an active desire to alleviate another's suffering. It's not, I mean, compassion will, will cause you to move. It will cause you to move. It gets you into action. Now, God is the father of compassion according to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. The word uh, re minor or compassionate uh, stands for sorrow and pity for one uh, stands for sorrow and pity for one who is in distress creating a desire to relieve it now the English dictionary also gave me some meaning it says compassion is a feeling of deep sympathy are you listening deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is striking by misfortune accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. Compassion is always accompanied by a strong desire. It's not just to sympathize, okay? It's always accompanied by a strong desire that causes you to move, to alleviate the suffering of that person. Praise the Lord. So this was what moved Christ. Now, let's, let's look uh, into some more deeper meanings of compassion. Compassion is that drawing it actually draws from your inner mind. It draws from your spirit. Is that drawing an agitation? You you get angry in your spirit, okay? Is that drawing an agitation of the innermost part of the innermost part of the sight of any distressed or miserable object? Now, at the when Jesus, the Bible says that when Jesus saw. When Jesus saw her, when Jesus saw her problem, when Jesus saw her misery, when Jesus saw what this lady was going through, when Jesus saw the young man whose destiny has just been cut off like that, something moved within Jesus. Something triggered in his spirit. And Jesus said, I've got to do something about this. Young people, may I speak to you. Life is not all about doing what you think you can do because you have the energy. Life is all about having Jesus as the ultimate. Life without Jesus is vanity. I must tell you the truth. I've been there. I have seen all kinds of things. I have done all kinds of things. There is no pay without Jesus. It serves and it pays, sorry. To serve Jesus. Now, this young man's destiny was closed. Jesus met with the mom, this poor widow. This widow whose last happiness has just been taken from her. And Jesus 
touch the coffin. The Bible says that he touched the coffin. And those that carried the coffin, they stood still. And Jesus, looking at the woman, he said, Weep not. I came to tell you, parents, that, that your stubborn son, that your stubborn daughter, those your stubborn kids who don't listen, I want to assure you that weep not because God can turn things around. I'm a living testimony. My dad was a praying man. My mom is a praying woman. The prayers you made for your children, they will not go in vain. I assure you this. They will not go in vain. Keep on praying for them. God will do something supernatural. Praise the Lord. And so God's Jesus met with this crowd. But look at this. Do you know that it was not because of the young man that Jesus stood? The Bible says that Jesus, looking at the woman, he had compassion. So that's why I encourage you, parents, don't quit praying for your kids. Don't quit serving the Lord. It pays. Because of your work in the kingdom, because of your work, God will also look into your family and your ch children, your kids. So, now here comes a game changer. Jesus met with the crowd. And Jesus touched the coffin. Then he spoke to the lady. He said, weep not. And then he said, young man! Jesus never prayed for dead people or prayed for sick people. All he does is to give a command. He said, young man! Arise. And the boy came back to life. Destiny was reversed. His destiny that was stopped. God reversed that destiny. They were taking the boy out of the city. But Jesus met them at the gate. I came to speak to you. There are many of you just at the gate of the end of your life. Jesus is meeting with you as you listen to this message. That it's about time you arise and get back to the city and get back to work and pick up your Bible and begin to preach that Jesus is Lord. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether you believe it or not, it is true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus was moved with compassion. This is a characteristic of every true believer. Every true believer must have compassion. And I'll draw you to a story about a certain man that was beaten and left by the side of the road, half dead. You know the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Bible declares that there were three kinds of people that came across the desperate man. The man that was beaten half dead. First, it was someone that, that was passing by. Someone from the city. A fellow countryman. He came by, looked at the desperate person, looked at him, and passed by. I didn't do nothing. Then came a priest. A man of God, so to say. By all right, that should have been the right person to help out. But what did he do? The priest came, looked at the desperate boy, didn't do nothing but pass by. Then came the third person, a stranger for the matter. Stopped, looked at the desperate person, went to him, cleaned his wounds, put some wine. That was, he administered first aid. Then took the dead man, sorry, the desperate man, half beaten, beaten half dead. He, after cleaning his wound, he, this stranger, took this man to an inn, or let's say a health center, a clinic or something like that, and then brought out money from his purse and paid an advance that treatment should be initiated. And he promised, he said, whatever is the cost, I will be back to reimburse you. This is compassion right there. He looked at him, he stopped, he was grieved in his spirit, he went. Compassion will move you to act, my brother. Compassion will move you. It is not just looking. I mean, we have seen situations where people come across desperate people, they just shake their head and say, oh, I feel so sorry for you. Feeling sorry cannot help. But acting after feeling sorry is compassion. 
Praise the Lord. So Jesus showed compassion. Young people, listen to me and listen carefully. Life is so short. Life is like a shadow. If you will live the rest of your days drinking, sleeping with women, going to nightclubs, doing all kinds of things, be all in the name of I'm a young person. <laughs> I tell you, you are playing with your destiny. You're not only going to die young, but you're going to spend the rest of your life in hell. God said in his word in Joel chapter 20, it is said, In the last days will I pour out my spirit on all flesh, and my young men shall prophesy. Young people, I came to challenge you that it is time for you to pick up the Bible like you used to do before. Even if you have not been there, but I came to challenge you that it is time for you to pick up your Bible, go into the street, in your classroom, at your job site. Begin to tell people about the goodness of God. Begin to prophesy because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When the Bible says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, it has already been released. You have the power. You will never know until you step out, my brother. You go preach the word according to Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Go preach the word. The Lord will confirm with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Stop waiting for your pastor to give you a pulpit. So you can go brag. There are many pulpits out there. You can set thousands of pulpits out there if you want to preach the gospel. You don't have to wait for your pastor to plan you to preach. That's just being proud. You have no excuse as you listen to me right now. You've spent most of your life in vanity. But whilst you're still breathing, like I said, Many of you looking at me right now, it don't matter how healthy you are, how strong you are, listen to me and listen good. Some of you looking at me right now, listening to this thing, you are at the gate, the final gate to the end of your life. But listen, as you hear this word, it's similar to the situation of Jesus meeting with the dead man at the gate of Nain. Then Jesus brought back life and reversed his destiny. As you're listening to this message today, your destiny is being reversed. You are being translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his light. The kingdom of Jesus. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the Holy Ghost. The grass is no greener on the other side. The grass, listen to me. You have one girlfriend today, you say, oh, this is not good enough. Tomorrow you want another one, and tomorrow you want the white one, you want the black one, the brown one, the tall one, the short one, and all kinds. <laughs> Since you've been doing that, have you, have you had any satisfaction? No satisfaction. Rather, most of you ended up in contracting deadly diseases. But listen to me. Even if you contracted a deadly disease because of your action, the Bible says a broken heart and a contrite spirit the Lord will not reject. If you willingly and seriously make a decision right now as I speak and come back to Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. From today, I repent of all my sin." He is faithful and just to forgive. He is not only going to forgive you, he is also going to heal you. And after that, I want to encourage you to start to read your Bible more than before. Start to pray and start to preach the gospel. For preaching of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I just came to you to encourage you young people that life is not all about what you want, all about your enjoyment. Life is all about knowing Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus came to give life and to give it abundant. But the devil came to steal, kill, and to destroy. Which crowd do you hang out with? Is it the crowd that leads to death? Or is it the crowd 
that leads to life. Whether you like it or not, as you hear me today, you belong to one of these two crowds. There's the crowd that accompanies life, which is Jesus, and there's the crowd that accompanies death. Make a decision. Choose him today whom you will serve. And I encourage you to choose God and choose life. Sooner or later, Christ will show up again. People don't think this is real. But well, if you don't believe that he will come again, when he comes, you will believe then. You've got no choice. I came to encourage you. I was not counted among those who will preach the gospel today. Here I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you listening to me, young girl, young boy. This message is for young people particularly. That your life will not be cut short. You shall not die but live. And living for what? You shall live to declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So now I want you to pray after me. Say, dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I come to you. I confess of all my sins. And I repent of all of them as well. I pray, I pray at this hour, asking your precious blood to wash me from the crown of my head and down to the sole of my feet. Lord, I want you to be the personal Lord and Savior of my life. From now on, I will begin to speak of you. I will begin to testify of you. I will begin to preach your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. If you made that simple prayer, the Lord heard you. The Lord heard you. It's, it's so supernatural. And I want to encourage you to join a, a, a Bible-believing church. And I want to encourage you to get a full, complete Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I want to encourage you to, to, to start a new life. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. It means that once you accept Christ, as you just did now, all your past has been erased. God never looks back at your sin. It has been erased by the precious blood of Jesus. Now you are starting a fresh new life in Christ. So I encourage you, the grass, like I said, is not greener on the other side. Those things you are pursuing, they are all shadows. They are not real. Pursue Jesus and pursue life. And God will bless you. I am Pastor Manasseh. I'm happy to speak the word of God to you. And remain blessed in Jesus' name.